Hey dolls! Okay, so I got some requests. I was talking about um, finding wild caught spiders in my yard or on my property, and you guys were really interested in that. You want to know how you can catch your own jumping spider to keep as a pet, and I'm just gonna kind of walk you through kind of what I do. So I have a little condiment cup here. I got these at Walmart in like a huge pack with their like in their paper plate and paper towel aisle, um, and then. I just poked some holes in it for ventilation and then you're gonna also need some sort of clean makeup brush fresh clean never been used makeup brush or paint brush this is what you're gonna kind of use to gently coax the spider um, into the cup the soft bristles are a lot better than just using your fingers and they're a little less scary to the spider as well so let's go out in the yard and see what we can find I'm probably not gonna catch every single one I see but I just want to show you guys the native species that I have around my area Hi guys, Manda editing here. I just wanted to do like a little PSA mention of this. If you do decide to keep wild caught jumpers as pets, please, please, please monitor them. If they go about a week to two weeks without taking any food or without webbing up or creating a hammock in their enclosure, that could be a sign that they're not adapting well to captivity. And that may be the case with some species. Some species adapt better to captivity more than others and also it all depends on the individual spider as well so just be monitoring your spiders and if you see any signs of them being you know uncomfortable or them not taking food or webbing up that could be a good indicator that maybe they're not ready for the captive life so it would be best to release them as long as they are a native species to your area please do not release any species in your area that are not naturally native there. That could be detrimental to the spider's health and well-being. This is my crystal cottage and there are actually quite a few little spooters on here pretty often. Um, the most common, you can see all the webs right there. I have left those intentionally just because I love spiders. Um, the most common species that I have found around my area are Platycryptus californicus um, and then some audaxes, uh, some Phytopus audax. And then I have also found some zebra jumpers so right here we have a little baby platycryptus californicus just a little baby right there just a little sling just a little youngster there are quite a few of those throughout my crystal cottage on the outside um, because they have reproduced lately so you can see there's another one right in there super duper cute um, and let's just give this a walk through all the way around. You're gonna want to look kind of in the um, grassy areas at the base of buildings. That's usually where the spiders like to reside. Sometimes I will find some other species up a little bit higher, but for the most part, oh, we have an Audax. There is a little Audax in here. There it is, right there, cutie little Audax. Such a cutie. So ideally what you could do is you could take your little condiment cup and just ever so carefully ah, cup the spider and then put the lid on. And there's your little cutie in there. I, of course, I'm gonna set this one free. I'm not gonna keep this one, um, but that's ideally what you can do to catch your own little outdoor jumping spider. And you can look in various different places like parks and you know just public areas. I personally just prefer checking my own backyard because I can find quite a bit around here. All right I see another little spider right there. That is another, wait what are you? Actually, I believe that's an Harbornatus. Oh, I think that was a Harbornatus um, species. I do have some of those here as well. Here is one. This is a male. My camera doesn't want to zoom in, but see how close to the ground that they are? That's usually the best place that you can look to find them. I was just gonna see if I could. Oh, and there we have a daddy long leg. <laughs> 
and there are more spiders crawling down there. But yeah, this is usually where I end up finding quite a few. Now the Harbornatus, I don't have any in my personal little collection of spiders just because um, they're very tiny. Like when they're mature, they're super small. Um, there's another Harbornatus that just went down right in there. So another really good place to look are along fences and fence posts. Um, this is actually down here in this corner right here is actually where I found one of the odd axes. Uh, my very first odd axe that I found in my yard actually. So sometimes I like to just go through and you can see like there's some webs here and there. So that shows life of spooters. And this spot right here in this little crevice was actually where I found Simba, one of my other odd axes. So now we're looking in this area here. There's just like a lot of um, kind of weeds and stuff grown up here. They really like to hide in the brush, in the bushes, um, places kind of like out of sight. So one thing you can kind of do, just be very careful when you're doing things like this. You can even wear gloves if you want to you can pull back the grass and kind of look behind up against the um, building and sometimes some will pop out that way. So if there are any little lips like this um, underneath uh, certain parts of the house or the building, they really like to build their little hammocks here. So what you can do is like gently find a hammock and take your little brush and just very gently touch on it this one appears to be empty i don't think anybody's home but sometimes there will be a little spider that pops out of there you just want to be extra careful doing this because you don't know if a spider is going into pre-molt or in the middle of molting so you got to be extra extra gentle with that and i just found another odd axe another thing that you can do is blow towards the ground and by experiencing that gentle breeze, it will kind of coax the spider out of hiding a little bit. So there are usually some odd axes in this area here. I'm gonna go ahead and blow. Um, ooh, I saw movement, but I do not think it was a jumping spider. <laughs> Now, of course, depending on the species of jumping spiders, some of them really enjoy direct sunshine, so you can get away with finding them on um, the fence posts. It's hot out here, by the way. Oh my gosh, it's in the like 90s right now. <laughs> so some of them you can find in the direct sun, even on a hot day, um, on the side of buildings, and just basically where I was looking. It all depends on the species and which ones are native to your area as to kind of like what they prefer. And also, of course, I did want to mention that the best time to kind of search for them is if it's during the summertime usually during the evenings before sunset um, right now I think it's about 7 p.m. so the Sun is starting to go down just slightly it's cooled down just a little bit but it's still pretty warm it's still plenty bright outside keep in mind that jumping spiders are not nocturnal so they're gonna be out and about hunting during the daytime so that is the best time to look for them also another thing is if you are hunting in the fall time just basically any time where it's sunny <laughs> where it's bright and sunny and the Sun is out and shining that is usually when you're gonna come across jumping spiders so this is one of those habernatus or habernatus species that I was talking about earlier you can see this one is pretty skinny so in theory I would catch this one usually take it in feed it a few fruit flies and then bring it back out and release it um, so you can definitely do that as well oh my gosh and here we have a female oh she jumped away no there's also a male right here so oh that's a big daddy long leg scary scary daddy long leg <laughs> It got out of the way real fast. Oh my gosh, in the grass right here, there is a Harboratus female. She is in the grass. You gotta be really careful where you step because you may end up accidentally stepping on them. Look at her go. Oh, 
she's so cute. <laughs> so that's about um, a full size for those little critters. So they're pretty tiny. <gasps> Man, it is warm out there. Make sure you stay hydrated when you go spider hunting. Um, as fun as it may be, stay hydrated, stay cool, especially in the summer months. But I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. I hope this gave you some little tips and stuff on hunting for your own jumping spiders to keep as pets. Please keep in mind that if you do choose to get wild caught jumpers or to catch your own jumping spiders to keep as pets, keep in mind that there is a huge chance that it could be a gravid female, meaning she could be pregnant and have some babies and if that is the case keep in mind you guys females can lay numerous egg sacs just from one pairing so just from one pairing with a male a female can lay egg sacs for the rest of her life and those egg sacs contain like a hundred plus babies so Keep that in mind, that is one of the things that may be a possibility. Feel free to join several spider Facebook groups. Um, I will go ahead and link my favorite ones down below. Feel free to follow those. And if you guys need help IDing specific species or ones that you have found or caught or if you need advice on whether or not it is male, female, just post in the Facebook groups. Everybody is there to help each other. Everyone is so nice and welcoming and I'm over there too and I'll help the best I can if I'm on there. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. I hope this was informative and let me know down below what jumping spiders you found in your area, what species are native to where you live and all that fun stuff and i will talk to you guys in my next video so until then so long stay strong stay true and be you